President Joe Biden says he gets it, that no one likes to spend more for essentials like fuel and food, but that painful price hikes are an inevitable result of a brutal conflict on the other side of the world. Russian President Vladimir Putin's ongoing assault on Ukraine. We cut off Russian oil into the United States, and our partners in Europe did the same, knowing that we would see higher gas prices. We could have turned a blind eye to Putin's murderous ways. The price of gas wouldn't have spiked the way it has. I believe that would have been wrong. Gas prices have risen globally amid the conflict, due in part to tough sanctions on Russian oil and goods, and the global pandemic, which has disrupted supply chains and productivity. Biden will meet with Saudi Arabian leaders in July in an effort to persuade the global oil cartel to increase supply. And domestically, he's calling for Congress to suspend the federal gas tax and for states to suspend their fuel taxes. His Republican opponents say they oppose it. What the administration, of course, is coming up with is yet another gimmick, uh, another Band-Aid, and something they know is dead on arrival up here in Congress. Putin also doesn't appear to be backing down. We are proud that during the special military operation, our fighters act with courage, professionalism, like real heroes. Russian soldiers of different nationalities fight shoulder to shoulder. In this unit, in the faith of correctness of their cause, in the enormous popular support which our soldiers feel, lies the great invincible force of Russia. Analysts say Biden's focus on the war's economic impacts is critical to maintain public support. It makes a lot of sense that Biden is focusing on the Putin price hike. Uh, it's because the, as the war progresses, we're seeing it impact different NATO economies in different ways, right? And, 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 and um, the price hikes at, at the gas pumps here in, in the United States is one key way. Well, how do you can keep support for a war? How do you um, keep al allied publics on board as the war goes on? And people are starting to feel it in different ways and feel it in their pocketbooks. That, that's a big challenge for NATO and the United States. The White House says higher prices aren't the only casualty of war. Russia is also blocking exports of Ukrainian grain, causing shocks around the world as far away as Africa. That is likely to be a topic when leaders of the world's seven wealthiest nations meet next week in Germany. President Putin is, no kidding, weaponizing food. Let's, let's just call it what it is. He's weaponizing food. He's got an essential blockade there in the Black Sea so that nothing can leave by sea. And that's, of course, how Ukraine has historically gotten its grain to markets. And so the president's working with the leaders around the world to see if there's other overland ways we can do that. Ukraine's president says this support makes a difference as the nation continues to fight against Russian forces. The lives of thousands of people depend directly on the speed of our partners, on the speed of how they implement their decisions to help Ukraine. But as this war grinds into a fifth month, who pays the highest price of all? Ordinary people.